okay in this video we are going to be looking at how to create a report without actually using a wizard basically all the three reports previously we have created that those were created we have been using a wizard using a wizard actually will do the work for us for a little bit more easily but that is not the professional approach to do the things and most of the people still after using the reporting tools for a very long time they keep on using a wizard as if it is the tool to be used every now and then remember that thing that you once you have been actually got the hangover of the reporting service you should go and actually create the report without a wizard now let's go and look into the how to create a wizard how to create a report without a wizard here is the file i'm going to start a new project in this case and once i start a new project we will look to create the how to create a report without using a wizard okay file new we're going to the wrong menus okay hold on for a second okay here is a project I have clicked on the project, and we are going to wait for some time till the time we are actually going to look into the details of the with how to create a report without using a wizard. Once we look into the details, we would be able to create as many reports as we want without ever looking at the wizard again. It gives us more control, and it makes up makes us a really a professional person out to, into the. creating the reports and other things rather than uh, it looks like a childish if you actually using a report wizard every now and then now we are going to create a report server project from the business intelligence project type as you can see we are not using a report project server project wizard in this case i am going to leave the name as it is in this case because this is just a demo and i am going to click it okay if you are using it as a production you definitely have to put a name to the report depending upon the what the report represents in your organization or where you are developing or what type of a report you are developing and for what depending upon that circumstances you have to name the report you have to name the uh, project you have to name every details now let me explain it to you what happens once the screen comes up you will always seeing you will be seeing a blank area as such for the report there won't be any fields or anything on the screen that you usually got with the report wizard that was very easy to use and we moved on just like a child clicking next and next and selecting next most of the things were done by the report wizard in this case we will be looking into the details and doing things on our own Okay, here is the solution explorer. As you can see, we have a solution explorer, and we can see the reports. Okay, now in this case, there is no reports to we have added up till now, but we are going to add a report into it, a blank report, and we will create a report from the this thing. Okay, so what we do, we go and select from the project the add new item. and then we would be prompted with the option of adding what type of item we want to add to the report projects and then we would be selecting the report from that thing and then a blank report would be added to our project which would which we will use to create a report in our case okay here it is it is again asking for the report wizard and data source 
I will just go and ask it to add a report. I will leave the name as it is. You better name it whatever you want to. In this case, I am leaving it as, as report one only. Clicking it add, and I am going to move on to the next option. What will happen? Let's see now. Up till now, we have been creating a report with using a report wizard, which has been doing our most of the work without using our brains. Now it's time to use our brains, and we are going to look into the details of how to create a report and how to get into the professional line of creating reports. And once the screen comes up. Basically, if you are looking at the screen now, you will see that there is a box that is completely blank. Okay. On the right side, if you see, there is the data properties and the reports and the toolbox, all are there. Okay. You cannot see anything else. Okay. On the right side of the solution explorer is there. If you see. Solution Explorer. Hold on for a minute. There we are. As you can see now, that the Solution Explorer. We have a report one showing into it. Now let's go and look at the toolbox. How do we go on creating a report? Now in the toolbox, we can see there is a option known as table, the matrix. These are the report actually type that we can create right now. If we are going to drag the table. And we are going to put it into this box. What happens? We can drag the table, and if we put it into the box, where it says to add an item, drag the item from the toolbox. And as you will see, that it will basically be adding three fields only into that report. Okay, here it is asking. First, it has asked before actually putting that thing into the that. Report area. It is asking to set the database properties right now, and we are going to set the database properties. Here is the data source. As you can see, it is asking for the data source. If I select new, because I don't have a data source, so I have to select the new. In the case if I had a data source, it would actually have showed up. It is embedded connection is Microsoft SQL Server connection string. I have to edit it to create a connection string. Very similar type than the, the, the what we were doing in the report wizard, but in this case we have to do it all manually to have the all the controls what we want to do with the report. Now, as you will see, the connection property box has been showing up. And we have to select the from the drop-down list box the name of the server and the other details. Okay, there here again I will explain it to you. There is two types of the authentication: Windows authentication and the SQL Server authentication. Most of the times, whenever you are using to going to use the report, the system administrator would be creating a SQL Server administration. He, they would not actually give. You a window authentication mode to access the database until and unless they are very sure you are one of them in the organization, and you would not actually hinder the database or do something wrong with the database. Still, in many circumstances, they would actually if the report has to be created for only a single database, the you would be create there would be a user created on that database, and you would be given the rights to that access to that database only. As simple as that thing. Let's not get into too much technical details about how it is, and let's go and select the server name. In this case, I am going to select the server name. The server name is eleven, 
and the uh, secret server name is 112009 I can type that word if I want here it is as you can see I don't want to select the 11 I am going to select 2009 and in this database I am going to select the pubs 2000 again in this case I could have selected north wind but I think so make things easier for you go with the test connection and once we are with the test connection we are successful and we are going to go with the ok part of it and there we are nearly done the credentials is you know you would be using it in the circumstances when you are going for a SQL server connection and every time you would like to preview the report if you are using a password and other things it will be prompting you for the username and a password putting them putting the username and a password in the credentials would not always ask ask you to enter the username and a password don't worry about it the credential in the user the username and the password would be encrypted no problem with that thing and I am just going to click OK in this case and we have got the data source set data visit properties to that date at control what we are going to drag it now that we are there now we can actually use a query designer to select the query design and I can actually put anything into the query designer I can put a SQL statement or I can select it from the database I can select the tables from the database and I can move that SQL code into it as you will see that I am going to select one of the one or two tables depending upon the what I am going to look into it and then I am going to actually use those tables to display the data in the report basically when you start a query designer it will actually allow you to actually enter the SQL code or you can actually use the add table and then you can generate the query using a graphical user interface that is giving it to you in a query designer or if you have the SQL code already you can paste that SQL code and verify it in the query designer and continue with it either way it's okay no problems it's taking some time hold on for a minute yeah there we are as you can see it will always be displaying the four panes that as you will be seeing there are four panes are listed on the top the sql pane the grid pane the result pane and the design pane what the whatever they are calling it and the explanation mark or the bang whatever you want to call it's a run for the SQL code now I can and this is a where that you can select a table I am going to add a table in this case and I'm going to select only one table in this case because I'm going it just for a demo sake I'm not going to put multiple tables the idea is basically to show how to create a report without using a wizard and I'm going to click it add once I click add, I could have used the views and function I have already so we will come to that part of it later in some other video I am just going to add a video uh, I am just going to add a, a table authors to the query designer and I am going to select some of the fields from them and then we are going to move on with it once I have added this table I'm going to click on the close and we are going to move the further details now that you can see that the author table has been listed above 
and we are going to select some of the fields from the author maybe i'm going to select the author name author last name author name phone number okay and let's maybe a city and a state i'll put select the city and the state once i select the city and the state so far so good i'm going to run the query once i run the query it will generate the result is executing query wait for the response from the data source what is it doing is basically now you can sort it on any category if you want you can filter it it's all is possible here you can group it in this case i am not going to do anything of that sort i am just going to correct create a sql statement that is very simple and i am going to show you how to move the fields into the reporting part of it there we are as you can see that it is showing up the reports it is showing up the data records in the data pane and we are going to click okay with this query and we are going to the move to the next part of the report creation and again i am going to click okay now you can see that is after creating so many things it has not added anything to the table it has only showing up the data and the header what basically you must be thinking that it must have added some of the details and other things into the reports and other things and i would just be actually going for a preview now but that is not true now remember you have to add these fields whatever you have selected into this thing now this is basically a type of a uh, active x act, active x control because windows basically is a graphical user interface and warment has been using the active x control since the visual basic and this is also an active x x control that has been created and that is what we have moved and dragged it here all these are active x control no 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 big everybody must be familiar with it no big deal about it okay now let's go to the reporting part of it and i am going to drag the author first name so what i have to do is to click author first name and drag it to the data part of it once i drag the author last name okay what will happen is that it will place that field into that box as you will see it will appear within a matter of some seconds there we are i've just added one of them and then i'm going to drag the other one click it and drag it to the other other second field and leave it there and i am going to drag the phone number to the last one now so far so good now the thing is i have got three columns only I do not have the fourth and the fifth. I want for the city and the state. So what I can do is to right click on the last column, and I can say insert column. It says left or right, but naturally I am going for the right. Left would be inserting in between the two columns. I am going for the right. I want to add to the end of the column. There is the other way also of doing it. I will show it to you how. Just drag the city here again this time. and leave it here and we are done with the city 
Now suppose if I do not want actually I can just drag this column state and move it to the end part of it as you will see there is a i bar I can leave it as it is and it will add the expression. Now let's do it once again so there is something wrong, gone wrong with it. Okay. There we have added the state. Just drag the field at the end. It will be added to the end. Now, so far so good. We are nearly to the little bit of creating a report. We are we have created a report. Now, now let's look at some other details also. Now you can see that I want to add a report header to this report. Firstly, rule number one. How do I do it? How do I add a report to the uh, header to this report? There are two ways of doing it. One is to actually right click and say insert and I can say insert page, page header and page footer as well as both. Or I can go to the report, I can say add page header. And there it is, as you can see, I have a page header here. And I can always add a page footer also. Now let's suppose if I wanted to add something here. And if I wanted to add something here, okay, depending upon the circumstances. Page header. If I wanted to add something to the page header, if I wanted to, okay, let's go and add a page footer also. Why not? Okay. Now here is the thing has gone. We have added both of these things. Now you can see the properties and other things. We can. It will show you every details of it. As you can now that that we have the page header already. Now what we can do is. Go to the toolbox and drag the text box to the page header side of it. Now what happens is that it will add a text box. Here we are. In this case, we are going to make it a little bit full to the full size. And I am going to enter some text. I have entered the author's report into the this thing text part of it and I am going to put something some more details later. Right now I am going to select it the whole this of the text and I am going to align it to the with the bold and align align it to the center and format it with the bold. As you can see that I have got it to the bold. I am going to click the bold report authors report. And I am going to align it to the center if I want. I can select it from here, align left, align justify center. Okay, here we are. I have to increase the font size. I can go and select the text properties. And I should be able to, sh it should actually prompt me to select the font size with the, okay, journal, good, so far. Here it is a font. Okay, and then we can look into the font details. Usually there has to be a Okay, 26 should do Arial is okay with me. I'm going to click okay And once we click we have clicked okay, it should come back to the screen and we would be looking at the author's report Okay, now Let's save this report.
now now that i have saved that report i can go for a preview of course we have to do a little bit of more of a formatting but basically you have got that idea of how to create a report without using a report wizard now this is basically how you would be creating a report without using a report wizard and you will seeing that there are many other things we can do without actually moving without much effort and creating a report hold on for a minute now as you can see that the report annual report has been created okay and we are done with creating the report as for as manually it is concerned what i am going to do is to be a little bit of more formatting i am going to show it to you and once i show it to you how to do a little bit more formatting what you must have seen in the previous video okay what i have to do is to take make a little bit take to the design part of it and i am going to move this thing little bit up so that it looks good enough just i can have to click and drag it uh, this can become sometimes a fussy it creates a problem i'll create it selecting it but we are going to drag it to the top Okay, here it is. Click on the corner of this thing, and then you can drag to the place wherever you want. Here it is. Creating too much fuss. as you can see that when you are actually using that plus type of the arrow back arrows to the both of the side okay click that part of it and drag it to the top and you would be actually dragging that thing to the top now i am going to drag the other part of it that is the report footer also so that i can decrease the size i can take this report header a report footer and move it up so far so good i can save this report in this case perfectly okay now now the only thing is that i have to change the name you know how to change the name i have shown it to you already in the previous reports just select it and type something else there we are we have created the report i am going to go for a preview i have just changed everything as you know if you want you can actually select the column heading and go for making it bold if you want you can select the whole row as i have selected it and you can say like bold and it will actually create the whole thing as a bold and i am just going for a preview it will start generating the report and we are looking at a preview as you can see and that is how we have created the report again the same thing you want to export it here is the option just click it on the, this option and you can export the
to whatever format you want okay the other thing is that okay nearly we have completed with this thing as you can see we have created the report if you want you can create as many report now as you want other things you can do i will just leave it here and maybe in the next video we would take some other part of the reporting